600 BC was the birth of the Imago Mundi, thought to be the world's oldest known map. Now, since then, the world's cartographers have been working tirelessly, refining and improving our understanding of this vast visual world, giving us the tools of our modern time, such as Google Maps, GPS, and Hex Map Cells. What's up, guys? My name is Gabe. I'm a developer advocate here at Hex, and welcome to another episode from our course on Hex Foundations. Now, just like we talked about in charts, Hex is a fully featured Python notebook, meaning you are free to use mapping libraries such as Folium, Deck, Plotly, or any other mapping library that you want to use. But today, we are going to transcend Python once again and look at a much simpler native solution in Hex, which are map cells. Specifically, we'll be covering why I use map cells and how to configure and customize maps to your liking. By the end of this, you'll have a better understanding of geospatial data and how you can work with it inside of Hex. So let's go ahead and get started. Map cells are Hex's way of providing you with a simple solution to visualize the geospatial data. And geospatial data is just a fancy way of saying data that references places in the world. Now this could be zip codes, addresses, country names, or even coordinates. And map cells make visualizing this type of data really easy. It's as simple as selecting a data source and then choosing how you want your points to appear on the map. And then you have a whole bunch of options for further customizations down the config column. Map cells are really easy to use, set up, configure, and it's overall just like a better experience than trying to use a mapping library in plain old the python so let's go ahead and gather our geo data and make a stand as hex finest cartographers now in today's journey we're gonna shift our focus from our cherished dumplings order data set and start stalking people on uber we're gonna use the coordinates of pickup and drop off locations as our geo data of choice although map cells also have the ability to visualize geo json data now i already have my data set prepared which you can also pull from our demo snowflake connection by just typing in this line right here uh from demo data demos uber rides all right so just to quickly go over what this data set is even trying to show us in the first place is we are looking at uber rides and i believe new york so we have some data that shows us the time how much the ride costs the pickup and drop off locations and we also have the year which all might come in pretty handy later down the road our main objective today with this project is to actually visualize the densities of pickup and drop off locations over time so that's going to be per year so we're going to refer each year where are people getting picked up the most and getting dropped off the most and how does that change over time so we can see how our map cell is going to shift and change and morph in all these cool ways so now that we have our clear objective in mind let's go ahead and start building our way towards visualizing this in a map cell so the first thing that i've gone ahead and done and i've done this on off screen was just transform the data so that we have the pickup and drop off locations all in the same column so that we can just plot all the pickup and drop off locations and then filter that by points and i'll actually just show you guys what that data looks like in a table display so here we go we have latitude and longitude all in one column and then we have the service which is is this a pickup or a drop off Dope. Next thing that we want to do is actually filter our data set to fall within a given year. For example, I want to see data only from 2009 or 2014 or 2010. So that's actually pretty simple to do. It's going to be a single line operation in Python. And we're going to say yearly rides is equal to rides. And we're going to say rides again, where the pickup year is equal to. And we'll say, let's just start off with 2010 or 2012. Uh, let's run this cell and let's actually just see what your lead rise looks like to make sure that our data is correct. And look at that. All of our data is from 2012. We have about 8,000 rows in here. Next up is the fun part where we want to plot the pickup and drop off locations in a map cell. And I can create a brand new map cell with the you guessed it the add button between my cells so i'm going to go ahead and click on this and i'm going to add a new map so similar to charts we're going to need to specify where our data is coming from which we can do in this data drop down right here so we're going to choose the yearly rides uh table or data frame that we just created and now we have a whole bunch of more options to choose from next up we're going to need to specify the data type and this just tells hex how we want our data to appear on the map is it going to be points is it going to be text is it going to be a heat map or an area and in most cases this is actually going to be coordinates as you see right here with the exception of the area map which accepts regional data or geo json now with the area map you can plot more complex geographies such as polygons and lines and different shapes um, again by using geo json or regional data so for example if you have data about counties in your data set you can select a region and go to u.s counties and then have the counties appear on your map 
But we are not going to be focusing on area maps today. We are going to be focusing on points. So I'm going to switch that back. All right, so just below this is the rest of the configuration options for the map cells. And there is tons of room for customizability here. First up, since we have our coordinates as separate latitude and longitude columns, what I'm going to do is come down to our coordinate section, choose type, and I'm going to say lat and long. And this is just going to let Hex know that we are going to give it separate columns rather than these combined latitude and longitude columns. Choosing this, I'm going to choose our latitude column and then I'm also going to choose our longitude column. All right, so now we've gone pretty far and we already see some points on our map. So let's just go ahead and take a moment to appreciate what we've just created. <sighs> All right, enough of that, because this looks terrible. This is literally just like a big blob of points devoid of any real intrigue or charm. So rather than bleaching our eyes to avoid this visual disaster, let's go ahead and enhance the visual quality with some colors and sizing. All right, so the first thing that I actually want to do is distinguish between our pickup and drop off locations. And since I added a new column, which is gonna be a service, we can do that down here in our map cell by going to the fill type and saying, we don't wanna be a single color because that means everything's gonna be uniform, changing all the same time. So I'll just show you what that looks like. If I change it to purple, everything goes to purple. Pink, everything goes to pink. We don't want that. What we really want to do is change the color based on the data that we're giving it. So I'm gonna click on type and go to color based on data. And now we see everything is black, which is also what we don't want, but we're gonna choose a column. And this is where we can choose that service column right here. And I'm gonna change the color palette to be, um, I think I can actually just do two colors. So we're gonna delete all these right here. Delete this, delete that, delete that, delete that, delete that. So now, ooh, these colors kind of clash a little bit. So let's maybe do some like, let's do like, eh, I'm gonna do like that color right here. So we can't really tell which is which right now, but based on the service, it's going to be either blue or this hot pink color right here. Just under that, we have the option to control the opacity, which is going to be how faded or how see-through these colors are. And I actually kind of like it looking like that. It kind of looks more, more cloud-like. So I'm gonna keep the opacity at like 65%. All right, so this already looks so much better and we can just go ahead and forget about what that was earlier. So matter of fact, let me just... All right, next up, I don't really care for the outline too much. And all this is really gonna do is just add a ring around each of our points. And I'll just show you guys what that looks like just so you guys can get an idea. So you can see now that we have kind of like this black ring around the points and we can even change the color of the ring to maybe be like purple or green or this color, which actually doesn't look too bad now that I look at it. But you can also adjust the width make it thicker, make it thinner. Um, even though it doesn't look too bad right now, I'm actually gonna turn it off because I don't really want my outline to be there. All right, so next up is the size section, which allows us to alter how big or small our points appear on the map. We have a single size for all points right now, and if we change the radius, all points are gonna change uniformly, meaning that we kind of just, the blob gets more and more blobby. What we're gonna do is similar to our color, where we colored based on data, we're also gonna size based on the data. So in this type option, I'm gonna Come down here and i'm gonna say size based on data i want my points to be size based on travel distance so i'm gonna go to my based on drop down and i'm gonna find my travel distance column and now based on how far or short the uber ride was our points are going to change so we can see here big points we have some small points uh, we have some medium sized points we have different sized points we have lots of diversity here but this might look a little obnoxious right now you know what i mean like we have some really big points and we have some really small points we can mitigate this by using the scaling option right here under the base on drop down what this is gonna do, if we adjust the, if we adjust the scale from the right side, it's gonna make the bigger points smaller. So if I do this, we can see that those bigger points are getting smaller. But if I do it from the other side, smaller points are going to get bigger. So if I do this on this side, we are going to get bigger points. So keep in mind that if you have points that are really, really small, for example, like these points right here, going down um, from the right side may make those points disappear altogether. So just keep that in mind when scaling. Now, there's no right way to scale points in these maps. So feel free to adjust the points until the scene looks right and you feel a sense of equilibrium. All right, next up we have visibility, which I'm not gonna talk too much about because all this really does is say, are the points there or not? 
and you can also adjust the opacity from here in the same way you can adjust the opacity in the color so i can make these even more uh transparent or i can make these even more opaque but i kind of like where it was at around what 65 so i'm going to keep it right there and the last section is going to be the tooltip and this is where so as you can see as i hover around the points we're not really getting any information about the point i'm not gonna see i'm not seeing like what is where is this location at where is the pickup where is the drop off where is blah 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 is this point even a pickup or a drop off i have no idea what these points are telling us and that's where i can add some of these fields in the tooltip so in the tooltip you'll just see all the columns that are in your data set and we can just select these to show information in our points. So for example, if I wanted to distinguish between is this point a pickup or a drop off, I can go ahead and select service. And now we can see, okay, blue was drop off and pink are pickups pretty cool if i also wanted to see like oh what year is this even though all this data should be for 2012 we can see that we can have the year in our points as well so this is just a nice way to add a little bit of extra information to your points so that users don't have to be like oh my gosh what does this even mean like i'm just looking at points it looks cool but i don't know what this is saying so i'm gonna go ahead and actually add maybe i'll add the latitude and longitude just because why not you know what i mean i think it's kind of cool to look at and maybe i'll also do the let's do the travel distance so we can actually really see how far the the uh rides were and also we can verify if our scaling was actually correct because now bigger points should be a higher travel distance and smaller points should be a lower travel distance so let's go ahead and verify that so travel distance for a 4.6 is pretty big and a travel distance for a 3.3 is pretty small so that's pretty cool that that works exactly how expected so this is pretty cool we have a really nice map that's giving us a lot of nice information and we can see that there's not really like a distinct place where lots of pickups are happening a lot of distinct place where lots of drop-offs are happening except for maybe like over here we can see a lot more drop-offs happening over here than in this section where a lot of the pickups are kind of happening in this like strip of manhattan let's see what, where this is at. actually i'm not very well versed on new york geography um but i'm i'm pretty sure this is like yeah anyway feel free to call yourself a professional cartographer and give yourself a pat on the back good job kid one of the last two things that i want you guys to be aware of in these map cells are these map options in the top right corner first thing that we have is the map style and this is going to let you choose between are we going to be in light mode or dark mode and look at that dark mode Ooh, look at those colors man that looks so nice uh we also have the option to go from satellite view so this is going to be kind of like your real world image to something like let's say the street view where you kind of just see highlighted streets and stuff like that uh, and then lastly, you also have the option to view the outdoor view, um, which looks very similar to streets view. I actually am not really for sure what the difference is between streets and outdoors. So if anyone knows the difference, go ahead and leave that down in the comments so I can know myself. Next up, we have the option to set as default start position. And this basically means that whatever view we're looking at will now be the default starting position. So if someone is looking at the logic view or the published app version of this project, when they come to this map, the default starting view for this map is going to be this view right here. So for example, if I even like add this to the project app to the app view, and you guys haven't seen the app view yet, and we'll talk about this in a few episodes but you can see that the map has just automatically started from that view that i was just on i'm getting a visit from my cat i'm gonna show you guys my cat right here because he looks so cute say hello hello next up we have pan to data and what this is going to do is actually put all of the data points that are in our data set in the view of the screen so if i actually click this we should zoom out a little bit because now it's showing us all of the data points that we have to look at in our project so there should be no points outside of this view and last up we have the map legend and i'm gonna just zoom back in a little bit more and come back over here we have the map legend which is gonna tell us things like what kind of data we're plotting which is going to be point and it's also going to tell us what we're coloring these points based on which we can see is based on service and we're seeing that blue is drop off and pink is pickup and the last thing is going to show us what the size is based on and right now our size is based on travel distance so again like i said bigger points for the travel distance smaller points smaller travel distances okay so the last thing that i really want to point out right now we are using points to visualize kind of like these like pick up and drop off densities but something that might work a little bit better for this is actually a heat map so what i can do and this is a really simple uh switch is to go up to our data type and go from point down to heat map and look what happens now instead of getting kind of like points all over the place we have kind of a nice 
density plot, which is showing us that like, okay, we have lots of activity kind of right here. We have lots of activity right here. We don't have as much activity on this kind of long strip of New York right here. As we zoom in, we can see that we get more and more details. So we can see that around this area, we have lots and lots of activity. In the movie over here, we have some activity, but not as much. And then if we go over here, we also have some activity, but not as much at all. Not even, not even close to what we were looking at on this side of our map. And the last and final thing are map layers. Sometimes what we want to visualize can't be done with just one set of map configurations. And we might want to layer a bunch of different configurations on top of each other. Oops, sorry. In this case, let's say for example, I want to pick a random trip or a ride and show on the map where that pickup and drop off location were. That's distinct from all other points on the map. In the map cell on the far left corner, we have this plus button right here. And if I click on this, we will be able to add a new layer. Now, very familiar to us, we're going to be able to choose our data source, which I've gone ahead and created off screen. And this basically just represents a random ride in our data set. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my data source, which is going to be this trip data frame right here. So I'll go ahead and select trip. And then the type, I actually want this type to be point or to be text. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my coordinates like usual. You guys have already seen this. Now in this bottom section, since we have chosen text, we're going to select a column that we want to have our map text draw from. So in this case, it's going to be the service. So it's going to be down here. All right, and once we have done that, we can see now, you might not be able to see it that well because it might blend in, but we have a pickup right here. And then somewhere in this map, we have a drop off, which is right here. So it was kind of hard for me to see that. So to make this more visible, let's go ahead and style this a little bit. Maybe I'll actually make the background white like this. And then let's make that a little bit bigger. I'm actually gonna just make this like, maybe like 80, yeah, somewhere around there, just so you can really see. So now you can see that this person got picked up around here and then they got dropped off over here. Each time I run the cell, this is going to update to a new pickup and drop off location each time. So now you can see that this person was picked up here and dropped off over here. All right, and there it is folks, another one down and only a few more left to go. I applaud you, I applaud you, I applaud you. I'm still applauding. As always, I'm happy that you guys made it through this video with me and hopefully you learned something new in the process. Now, some key points to store in your neuronal SSDs are that map cells are the easiest way to build up geospatial visualizations inside of hex and you can do it without writing any code at all. Map cells can visualize coordinates, regional data, or GeoJSON. And lastly, you have a ton of customization options in map cells to add some eye candy to your visuals. I hope you guys have enjoyed and in the spirit of today's video, leave a comment down below with one of the coolest places that you guys have ever been to, whether that's on the globe or not. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Okay. <laughs>